Hey y'all, welcome to Math with Mrs. Davis. Today we're going to talk about similar figures. Our objective is to be able to construct ratios and proportions to solve for missing measures in similar figures. Let's start off with a little bit of review. So let's recall from our transformation unit what a dilation is. A dilation is a proportional stretch or shrink of a shape based on a scale factor. And recall when you're thinking about like an eye, you have a pupil that's dilating and shrinking based on the amount of sunlight in a room, right? So that's dilating, and I'm gonna erase this scary eye that I drew, but as a visual, you see that your pupil is dilating and shrinking, stretching and shrinking, according to the light in a room. That is a dilation. When we're talking about dilations, we're also talking about a scale factor, which is basically we're just multiplying the side lengths by a specific number, and we often call that number our K value. And recall that if K was greater than one, it resulted in a stretch, because if I multiplied all the sides, say by two, I would get a figure that's twice as big. But if K was less than one and greater than zero, I would shrink the figure. So if I multiplied all the sides by one half, they're gonna be half as big as they originally were, so the figure's gonna be half as big too. All right, so that's a dilation. Let's talk about then what a similar figure is. Similar figures are similar figures that have been dilated by a scale factor. So that means if two figures, you could stretch or shrink the other one by a scale factor, then they are similar. So let's look at this triangle ABC and XYZ. Notice that AC corresponds to side XZ. AC is three. XZ is six. That looks like maybe our scale factor, our K value is two. All right, let's check AB. AB is five and XY, the corresponding side is 10. To go from five to 10, I multiply by two. The same thing's happening from C to B and Z to Y. So our scale factor is two if we're going from ABC to XYZ. Okay, these are similar figures. Therefore, we would write that by saying triangle ABC is similar to triangle XYZ, where this tilde or squiggly line is telling us similar. You should recognize that from the symbol for congruent figures. Notice the difference is that we do not have the equal sign. That makes sense, right? Because they're not congruent. They're not the same or equal. Therefore, we don't wanna put that equal sign in our figure. We're just gonna put the top squiggly line. So we would put the squiggly line to denote similar figures. Okay, let's do an example where the triangles are not similar. Notice this triangle here has a right angle. There's no right angle in this triangle on the left. Therefore, I know right away there's no way I could stretch or shrink this triangle or this triangle to make it look like the other one because I would have to change the angles. I can't just multiply the side lengths and make it become like the other one. Therefore, these triangles are not similar. Let's talk then about what specifically, what qualifications have to be there for two triangles to be similar. The answer is, if we know that at least two angles are the same, angle, angle, then the triangles are similar. So this is all we need to prove for the two triangles to be similar, is if two triangles, or sorry, two angles are congruent. And these two triangles here, you see that this angle is congruent to this angle, and this angle is congruent to this angle. Therefore, these two triangles are similar, because if you recall from our congruent figures unit, that actually means that all three angles are congruent, but that goes back to that lesson. That is all we need to prove is angle, angle, and therefore the triangles will be similar. So now the most important question, let's look at these triangles and see if they are similar. Let's practice that. So triangles ABC and EDC, are they similar? All right, ABC and EDC. This might be a little hard to visualize because you're trying to see, well, what angles correspond to each other? Recall again from our congruent figures unit that the way they're named is telling you what parts correspond to what. So the first letter corresponds to the first letter in this one, second letter to the second letter, the third to the third. So A corresponds to E, B corresponds 
to D and C corresponds to C. You could also think about it as AB corresponds to ED, uh, BC corresponds to DC, and AC corresponds to EC. All right, so let's look at these triangles and see if we can prove that two angles are congruent to prove that they're similar. Right away, they're telling us angle A is 50 degrees and angle E is 50 degrees. Notice angle E, A and E are corresponding, and if they're congruent, then those two, that's one angle that we have proved are congruent. So let's see if we can prove another two corresponding angles are congruent. Look at what we have in the center here. These two angles are vertical angles, and by definition, vertical angles are congruent. So we have two pairs of angles that are corresponding and congruent, therefore they are similar. So whenever you have this kind of bow tie, look for the vertical angles, and that's gonna be an easy one to tell right away. Those are congruent. And if they tell you a hint like these two lines are parallel, you'll be looking at alternate interior angles or something, or they might just tell you that the two angles are congruent. All right, let's look at another example. Are triangles MLK and NOK similar? All right, this is a little bit hard to visualize because one of the triangles is embedded within the other one. So I'm gonna try and draw it off to the side. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be close enough for us to visualize that. So here's triangle MLK. I'm gonna draw this triangle NOK. So they already told us L and O are the same angle. So we've got one angle. We need to find another to prove that they're similar. Is there another angle that's obviously gonna be the same in both of these? And the answer is yes. This angle right here is gonna be the same because they shared that angle. So angle K is gonna to correspond to angle K. Therefore, they are similar. Not too bad. Well, the question maybe in your mind is, why do we care if they're similar? Why are we talking so much about this? Well, the answer is that if they're similar, that means they're proportional. So we can use proportions to find missing measures. This is so awesome and so powerful. Let's look at an example. Let's say triangle GHI is similar to triangle JKL. Find the measure of side KL. The most important part when you approach one of these problems, and maybe the hardest part, is making sure that you know which sides correspond to which. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight and using the way that they're named to see which two sides correspond. So GH are the first two letters, JK are the first two letters, so GH and JK correspond. GH and JK correspond. Now I'm gonna look, HI and KL are the second letters, so HI and LK correspond. Now we need to set up a proportion and recall a proportion are two ratios set equal to each other. So let's make a ratio of the sides for the first triangle, GHI. I'm gonna set it up like this, 34 over 45, because that's the ratio of these two sides that I'm given. Now, when I set up my other ratio, I need to make sure that the corresponding sides are on the same side of the fraction. So since I put HI on top here in this fraction, I need to put LK on top here. I'm gonna go ahead and call LK X since that's what we're looking for. Now, GH is on bottom and JK corresponds to GH. So I'm gonna put JK on bottom. And this is like a proportion that we solved the day before in our last lesson. So this is super easy. We know to cross multiply, we're gonna get 45 X equals 34 times 14, which is gonna be 476. So X is gonna equal 10.578 or round that to 10.6. I wanna show you that you could also set this ratio up in so many other ways. You just have to make sure that the corresponding sides stay in the same location in both fraction that you set up. So you could also set this up like this. I could set up 45 over 14, since those are the two sides that correspond to each other. 
Now, since I put the big triangle on the top and the little triangle on the bottom, I need to put them in the same order on the other side. So the big triangle has to stay on top and then the little side has to stay on the bottom, but they're corresponding to each other. So we're gonna have 45 over 14 because those two sides correspond. Then I'm keeping the big triangle on top, which is 34, and the little triangle on the bottom. And X and 14 are both from the little triangle, 34 and 45 are both from the big. And this is just a ratio of the two sides since we know that they're similar. Notice when we cross multiply, we're basically going to get the same thing. 45 and X are gonna be multiplied by each other and 14 and 34 are gonna be multiplied by each other. So we're gonna have 45X equals 476. I'd encourage you to play with this and see different ways that you can set up these fractions, these similar proportions to see how many times can I get the same answer by writing it a different way. Let's look at another example. So let's say quadrilateral IJKL is similar to quadrilateral MNOP. Find the measure of side NO. Okay, let's point out the sides that are corresponding to each other. Side LI corresponds to side PM and side JK corresponds to side NO. So there's a couple of ways that we can set this up. One way is by putting the sides that correspond to each other in a fraction. So what I mean is 13 over 53, because those are the two sides that correspond between the, the shapes, and then 33 over x. Now we would cross multiply, so you'd have 13x is going to equal 1749, and when you solve for x, you're going to get 134.54. Okay. Let's try and set it up a different way. What if I wanna do the two sides in the one quadrilateral to the two sides in the other? So I would put 13 over 33 and set that equal to, I need to put the side that corresponds to 13 on top, which is 53, and the side that corresponds to 33 on the bottom, which is X. Now we would cross multiply, so we're gonna get 13 X equals 1,749. See how we're ending up with the same thing here? Therefore, x is gonna be the same. It does not matter which way you set it up, just whichever way makes more sense to you. Okay, let's do another example. Solve for x. Here's those bow tie triangles we worked with before. We already proved that they were similar to each other because we knew the triangle BCA corresponds to DCE. Let me show you how I got this. So, we know that angle C those two angles are congruent, right? And we know that angle A and angle E correspond because those are marked as congruent. Well, let's say I'm looking at this top triangle and I'm gonna name it A, C, B. Well, since I've already know that E and C correspond to A and C, then the last letter I have to put up here is D. So triangle A, C, B corresponds to triangle E, C, D. That's going to help me visualize how to set up my ratio. Because if I have AB, what side does AB correspond to? By looking at how I named it, I know that AB corresponds to ED down here. And I also know that side BC right here is going to correspond to DC or CD. So if I set up my ratio, I could set it up like this, 3.6, which corresponds to x, so 3.6 over x equals 6.6 .6 over 11. I cross multiply, and that is going to give me 39.6, which is equal to 6.6 .6 times x. I divide both sides by 6.6 .6 to get x equals 6. So I'm not going to show you how to set it up in the other way so I don't keep using all of your time, but that's one way to set up the ratio, explore with others. All right, final example, let's solve for x. We already know that these two triangles are similar 
because L and O are congruent. They share an angle right here, so those that angle is also congruent, and therefore the triangles are similar. Now, we need to visualize this triangle outside of it, right? So I'm going to draw my triangles up here so that I see what I'm looking at, so I know how to set up my ratio. So here's M, L, K, and N, O, K. Now, O, K is my X, and L, K is told, tells me is 35. N, K is 15, and to find M, K, I just have to add 10 and 15 to get 25. This should be super easy for us to set up our ratio. I'm going to do 35 over X equals 25 over 15. Cross multiply, we're going to get 525 equals 25X. So X is going to equal 21. Woohoo! That was awesome. I hope that the proportions and all the similar figures is making sense. Do some practice and make it perfect. Let me know if you have any comments or suggestions. Like and subscribe. Thank you.